Hello, hello everyone. Good night again to our weekly show, Christian and Sex. Uh, this is at DJ KTE. That's Keith the Entrepreneur. And we're here tonight for another fantastic segment here. Um, I'm here along with uh, Lady Misty, who will be coming on board real soon. And together, we are going to make it happen tonight. And of course, you, the wonderful audience. Uh, for the last few weeks, you have been so vibrant and so interactive uh, that we just have to keep it going. Uh, we want to have a conversation here. Um, want to just have good dialogue and discuss issues that uh, affect our families. Um, from the male to the female to the kids um, to our community, churches, and and how we can create a better understanding to live among each other and I guess affect each other more of a positive way, opposed to the negative or the negatives. So, folks, I hope you get ready tonight for a wonderful segment. Um, we usually encourage our audience to kind of uh, give us some time to get warmed up into the show and you can have your questions ready and so forth. Um, and that will definitely uh, definitely be a good, uh, good, good, good thing so we can share and hear your perspective on and how you feel. Um, on uh, Christian and Sex here, we don't come to quick judgments. Uh, we are coming from a Christian perspective. And, and so we we are going to be sharing from that aspect of it. And we welcome your ideas and see how we can, uh, as people, you know, as the human family, uh, I would say, encourage and uplift each other, uh, which I think is the idea of what we are doing. So, Last week we talked about um, we talked about uh, we discussed a very important topic and it's a it's a segue into what we will be discussing this week. But last week uh, we talked about to what extent has the family dynamics changed, and uh, of course we talked about uh, women um, delaying having kids. We talked about uh, single women having more babies. We, we talked about same sex uh, relationships and just to touch a few things that we had we had read from the fact sheet. Um, and we we find that we find that people are very spirited. Um, folks came on board and we really 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 um, We really uh, was having a wonderful time. So, so um, I see Willow trying to call, and that's, let me see who's this Willow. Hello, Hello. Good, night. good night. This is Willow. Hello, you on the air. <laughs> okay, so Willow's not answering, so let me just move right along. But anyway, we talked about those those things last week. And um uh So this week we're, we're going to talk about a very important topic, and uh, it's uh, predator aware or unaware. And as you may know it, we have uh, this crazy case going on. Um, I'm not sure if you heard about uh, the, the Harvey Weinstein case. And today it was reported that um, a jury convicted Mr. Weinstein of felony sex crime and rape, but acquitted him from the most serious charges against him, predatory sexual assault. And of course, as I say 
what we discuss here affects us all. And as far as uh, I'm aware of the case, um, watching it from some time ago, you know, it's it's really it's really incredible to see how in society people can can go through stuff. You see how power, sometimes greed, and men who are hold high office, and you know, uh, the power can be abused. You also see where a lot of women may be ambitious. Sometimes they are um, they know the risk and they settle because they're looking for they're looking for uh i guess uh, you know fame and fortune and that kind of thing i think we have misty here with us yes you do good night hi misty hi how are you i always say when you when you're here how was your day ah it was a busy one i got in kind of late so i had mm -hmm. to be you know kind of preparing dinner and all of that before but it was okay nice nice i'm glad you're good you know nothing like having a having our health right so yes. i kind of kicked things off here a little bit uh misty and i was kind of went back a little bit last week and what we talked about um okay. we talked about to what extent has the family dynamics changed and mm -hmm. um of course you know kind of run down a few things that we talked about do you remember anything that stuck out with you last week that you that you remembered Ah, uh, well, it was a live discussion. I remember that. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember yeah, the tail, the tail end of it? You remember the tail end of what we discussed last week? Uh, yes. Uh, persons were, you know, asking about uh, toys and how Christians view uh, masturbation and all of that. Okay, got so, you. Yes, we did. Yes. So I, I kind of said we're going to we're going to somewhat um, dive a little bit into that, but just kind of switch gear a little bit. I was directing the, the, the conversation today on uh, news that happened today with uh, Marvin Weinstein. I'm not sure how much you're following yeah, the case. New York so Times, the, yeah, 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 serious. So he was convicted. Um, he's in Rikers, I believe, um, and I guess that, that's where he's going to be held, and I, I guess until the, the final. Say so. I guess how many time he spent in he be spent in jail, if any, or how long. So it's been a while. It, the case has been happening, and and so tonight, uh, the topic tonight is predator aware or unaware. So we know in our world we have men who prey on women, you know, uh, mm -hmm. from wars to wars your to local your CEO, CEO to the powerful Mongols, so to speak, to the the, the Hollywood. You know, big wigs and whoever, you know, even churches, some churches, you have men who have power and authority, um, somehow abuse that and pray in women, you know, or, or, right. or children. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where we, we want to deal with, as well as those who are doing it, on a, um, not being aware that they're doing it. Because many men, I realize that they, Say things and do things say towards things um, a female, and they're hurt and they're they're uncomfortable, but they're not, they're not aware of it. So they they're too angry to this thing here. Okay. What do you say? Can you not be aware of it though? Like I I don't know, but I, so, I think so, I so think so from the man's from the man's point of view, it's okay to do that. Um, it's never okay whether you're aware or not aware. It's never, okay. it's never a good thing to do. Whether you, because see, I, I think that when I say unaware, there are levels of it. There are people who sit down and plan, and they and they feel well. You know what? I I'm gonna do this. I'm going to, you know, I want this particular woman, and this, this is my approach in in you know getting my way with her. Um, right. and, then, and then you have the other guy who just basically he, he has a his culture a certain way. Maybe the guys he's been around with, what he sees dad did, you know, what he thinks is okay, normal for him, and doesn't know that he's really affecting, uh, you know, others in a very negative light. Um, so I think those are two dynamics that we we want to kind of look at because 
um, a lot of times people are just unaware how they're showing up and how they're affecting other people, you know? Uh, so I think these are areas where, where I think I want to address these things. I think we should address these things because it is very widespread. I mean, you think about the amount of women who have been, who have been, um, been, uh, I would say, preyed upon. It's it's mm-hmm. staggering, you know. Um, so, I think this. I think it's just something that we really should um, should really kind of dive into and and see how the audience feels about it. You know, they have they can always call in and and share their thoughts on it. Uh, this is our uh, UME Radio at UMEDB uh, New York. Um, you can get uh, we we here every Monday night at nine. And we also air on Tuesday at nine. Uh, we can hear the segments. Uh, you can also check it out. Check out our app. Um, for those who are um, at your app store or your Play Store, it's You Me Radio. That's the letter U M E Radio, one word. And you can also um, get us from there as well. Yes. So. Do you know of anyone, Missy, that you could say, well, listen, this person was working at a job and, you know, the boss, you know, wanted certain extra favors and they, they would probably put the pressure on her and, you know, maybe a little enticement here, money, whatever it is, or a raise. Mm-hmm. And they just maybe either left the job or they, I've heard of any stories of, of uh, females who have gone through that someone even known and you, you may have gone through that. Oh, you've gone through that. I've gone through that. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. So, so, yeah, so how did you, how, how did you that. navigate that? Uh, how, how did you navigate that, that, um, that, uh, that well, scenario? I, well, I used to work at a particular place uh, just out mm-hmm. of high school. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So you were young. Like, you... Yeah. So yeah, I started working pretty young. So, Mm-hmm. Just out of high school, and I was there about a year, mm-hmm. and I moved to a particular section, mm-hmm. and there was this man there. Mm-hmm. Well, he was my immediate supervisor at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, at first, he was pretty nice to me, you know, showing me around and so on. So I really didn't take much thought to it, you know. I just thought he was being friendly, you know, being nice, trying to show me the ropes because I was in a new department. So I was learning the ropes, right? Anyhow, I I was timetabled, like scheduled because I was basically like an intern there at the time. Because I wasn't fully on staff. And I noticed that I would be scheduled for evenings. I, I'd have to work late. And I found that very strange. Like all the time. Like all the time. Hmm. And I went to him and I said, but I don't understand why I have to be here on overtime and so on all the time and he didn't really give me a very plausible response anyhow you know I continued doing what I had to do and then the advances came um, it, it came to a point where it was my word against his because he was he was in a position where he could manipulate things. Hmm. Was it monetary uh, enticements or um, no, ways well, or well, well, it, it well it was yeah it was like promotional because you know he threatened my my job there. Okay. Because I, yeah, because I wasn't yet on staff on staff. Right, and um, his advances were, you know, mostly of a sexual nature. Okay. I, 
I found out, you know, that he was along with he he was married by the way. Yeah, and he very was, um he very was, common stories we we hear about a lot of these married men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, he could be my father, you know, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. And I I noticed too that he was along with another young lady in the office, but she was along with it, so you know. That was my business. That you know, that's not my kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it, it got really bad. It got to the point where um, we had a physical fight. Okay. And um, I had to. Uh, I stabbed him with the scissors. Can I say that on air? <laughs> well, you know, you you defended yourself. Um, uh, defend yeah, yourself. Yeah, I had to. I had to because of 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 his advances and so on. Mm-hmm. He wasn't. He wasn't hurt. You know, badly. Okay. He probably just got a scrape to his arm and such. But we had to go to court and you know the back and forth and all that. So I know what that feels like. Especially when it's somebody in, you know, a certain position and you have to deal with that because you don't have much say, you know, you don't, you don't have the links to, to stand up for yourself. Right. Something like David and Goliath, huh? Yeah. And in, at that time, honestly, he did a lot of things to to sway people his way. Okay. You know, he told a lot of the staff members that it was a misunderstanding and I misunderstood him and, you know, he was just trying to be nice to me and I was ungrateful and, I'm, and a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, and, you know it's, it's interesting, but it, it's amazing how often you hear that, 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 um, that, that dynamic where, you know, when caught, all of a sudden, you know, just try to get a, galvanize a team around them you know, as if they're the good guys, you know. And I've read a story several times similar to, to what you're saying, you know, with the with the, the predator somehow getting getting people to I guess what what's the word I'm trying to find? It's um, to, to to be complicit, you know, to let it fly and you know, turn a blind eye somewhere or the other. So I, I, I hear you, I hear you. So you know, your story really, I'm sure, resonated with a lot of females around um, mm-hmm. the country, you know, and the world. And yeah. that's kind of why we talk about these things, you know, um, Misty. And it, it's, 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 it's a real issue. I see, uh, if you don't mind, those names I'm seeing, I see um, Nate Namtam, I see Falfed. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Dear Lee, I'm, yeah, yeah Tommy. Yeah. Uh huh. Scott, welcome, welcome, Greek. welcome aboard. Okay, I think that's great. Greenland, oh, uh, Greenland, I think. Yeah, welcome, guys. Welcome to Kristen and Sex. Uh, again, that's so a we are uh, we are we air um, Tuesday nights at nine, and guys, you can definitely tune in. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, you can always call in with your thoughts and your feedback. You know, you can you can email us as well, and uh, we can definitely have a good time tonight. So, right. so you think a lot of these people, when they when they have when they're caught in these scenarios, do you think? Do you think? Um, thank you. You say glad, glad I pronounced your name correctly. All right, Greenland. <laughs> All right. Um, but um, do you think that a lot of women are, are being opportunist? Why they get caught in these things, or is that solely the men just having their way? What what's what's going on in this um, thing here? Misty? Um, I'm I'm not even sure. All right. In in my case, well. The, the young lady that was along with him was my friend. Right? Okay. We were friends, but I didn't know of the relationship at first. Right? It's in saying to, to, to her that, hey, you know, this person is coming at me and so on and so on. She says, really? 
Because she was, so she was kind of, she, she sounded surprised. Yeah, because she didn't know that I was wow. talking about the same person at first. And then I was saying, yeah, it's him. And she's like, no, that can't be because such and such and such. And I'm like, okay, well, that's your thing. So you do you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and I'm, I told her that I don't think a friend and myself should be along with the same man. I don't know. Mm. Even if that was the case, no. But, you know. And um, at first, it put a strain on our relationship as friends because it's like she didn't believe me or she thought that I wanted in. Mm. Even mm. though I didn't want in at all because, you know, that's not my thing. So, 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 so what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing, Misty, is that having principle and, and having your, your uh, moral set is a, is a key thing when, when it comes to these to. kind of things, because because what I'm hearing, and I've heard it, um, because the lady that, that represents, that uh, that's representing Harvey Weinstein, uh, she's really digging deep into the minds of these women. You know, as much as some, but, of, them but, could, but some of them could be, some, some could be, I mean, could be innocent, but she's saying there's some who are very op might have been opportunistic in saying, yes, "Hey, and you also, know what?" Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. I mm -hmm. I was listening to an interview that she did on a podcast. Okay. And she was saying the, the, the reporter asked her, you know, what? How do you feel representing him? What would you do if you were in a position like that? Mm -hmm. And her response was. I was. I will never be in that position because I don't put myself in compromising position. Yeah, I thought I heard that and, too. Yeah, and I was like, "That's not the case. That's not always the case." I thinking about it and thinking about the, the situation I went through those years ago when I just started working. I didn't put myself into that position. I, I went to work. You know, right. mm -hmm. I didn't go there seeking anything i went there to work but, 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 but lady misty on in any way or anything like that but lady misty look at this right how look at how hollywood uh, presents the glamour mm -hmm. and the fame and a lot of women you know people in general but in, in this case we're talking about women who said man i want to mm -hmm. be a star i want to be the next you know hollywood uh, uh um mm -hmm. uh julia roberts you know if you want to, if you want to say that, and right. they they now you know a lot of them they they wait tables, they didn't take a regular job, they had to sacrifice, you know, so much of their mm -hmm. lives, you know, to get in that world of where to start to meet these people who are going to influence a career and make them become a star, and sometimes having this opportunity where you meet this huge um which white powerful men uh which most of them are um here's your big opportunity so you, you're that's thinking true. now that that's true. and 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 a lot of them are naive too to how far or what these men will do anyway because so i think a lot of women who have gone through it have kept silent and i find it interesting how mm -hmm. when one person comes out for whatever reason whether it's just finally being bold or finally saying this enough is enough then you have a whole slew mm -hmm. of people coming behind saying, hey, me too, me too, me too, to the point where you wonder, hey, are they just trying to make money off this guy or what? Or is it really the case? Uh, not not, not um, diminishing the reality of what's, what happened or what is happening, but now that here you are face to face with a guy, you're, you're definitely not an, not an equal plane. This is somebody who's influential now, power right now. Right. And he's saying, meet me here, meet me there. And you're really saying, listen to me, if I don't meet him there, I'm going to blow this chance. You know, you don't want to say no, but you're hoping mm -hmm. for the best. You're hoping that mm -hmm. things will be okay. And here you're caught in the very in a place where uh, you feel vulnerable and then you're trying to not to sound too, um, you know, standoffish. You want to kind of 
see what the next round is going to be without cutting it all too short. And hopefully he'll, you know, work with you and, and so you can get the deal or the, the promise or the contract to go wherever the next um, phase is. Um, but why do these women sometimes, why did they right. go, why did they go alone? I mean, as far as I know, he was, it was a married man. So why would they bring somebody, another female or a male or something? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by that. I don't know. Sometimes, uh, well, you, you are asking if, if it can be about money. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the, the, the pendulum can, can swing either way. Okay. Because, ye yes, for to get a chance in. Because I've always heard that Hollywood is a, is a hard place to get a chance. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is. I do believe that some, some women may do that. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that that's not the case sometimes. And why they don't go with somebody? Because they trust this person that this person is authentic and is going to help right. them along. And I'm seeing where this this man is up in age and, you know, I'm guessing he's respectable. You know, as you said, he's influential. So I would think that most of these women would not see him as a predator. Okay. So there, there is no need to be overly cautious, let's say that. There's no need okay. to be overly cautious and so, so in other words so in other words is until the, the 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 top blows over, that's when it, it's like wow, we didn't know. So all this time it's been kept under the rugs. Right. Uh hey, I see um that's right. summer ninety nine. I see you on board. I see Delhi. The name Delhi sounds familiar. I've seen the name before. I think you're a returning uh, listener. Thank you. I see Young. Thank you, Young, for entering. Uh, PBGCF. Wow, interesting name. Uh, just joined us. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Christians and Sex. Uh, tonight, we're talking about sexual, uh, we're actually predators, aware or unaware. So we're dealing now with the one who is aware of it. And in his case, it's as if someone said he built this empire to actually <laughs> to prey on women, in other words. And so the, the empire was the disguise, you know, and the, the 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 man on the inside was what he was what he was about. Um it's a sad case. Um it's a sad case. And you see how women, you know, women are affected and you see how it affects the family. Now you have a lot of women now who, um, moving forward in their lives, a lot of them they 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 are suspicious of men, um, to the point where even you being nice is still oh, a yes. I was, suspect. I, I, I've... So how do you win? How oh, do you? Oh Lord, I've been I've you... been there. I know. Wow, and 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 so many I women. Don't think you, I don't think you. I don't think you ever get over it. You never, you never get over it. Wow. I don't think so. I, I think, I think it, it, it turns on a switch in your mind. Mm -hmm. To just, you know, just have, have an, have a, have a cautious mind. Okay. You know, just, just to keep your eyes open a little bit wider, mm -hmm. and you know, listen a little closer, and okay. All of that kind of thing. Interesting. So it's just no, funny. And you have to be like sifting through, was that a joke? Was that a lead on? Was that, you know? Wow. You know, the, the Me Too yeah. movement have gone so far. I mean, they have really, really, it's like, it seems like the pendulum is swinging too far now because you have it now where even a compliment can seem as if it's a, uh, uh, sexual harassment. harassment. Yeah, you know, you, so you you can you can yeah. lose in pers be losing perspective now. Um, but it is really it's really a sad sad world. I'm not sure if if, if any of our listeners out there, if you want to share something, you can call in. Uh, 
and talk with us. We can maybe just, you know, get a, a take on what some of your uh, thoughts are on this new breaking news with um, Harvey Weinstein. Um, I mean, this, of course, is no is not uh, predicated to just the the, the one particular um, um, ethnicity. I think it affects blacks and Spanish and Africans and you name it. And uh, people everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. I think uh, experience these things in some way, shape or form. And I think what blew my mind was when, right. I, when I found out when the, the Catholic thing, when that was uh, exposed the way it did. And oh my goodness, the, the amount of priests, you know, that that were, were charged with these things. It was pretty, oh, yes. pretty, pretty, pretty heavy stuff, you know? So there's really no safe and that haven. Puts such a dark cloud over the, that puts such a dark cloud over the church mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how people view um, the church and Christendom and mm -hmm. um, people, to be honest, people lose that kind of reverence and respect mm -hmm. for, you know, the church, the mm -hmm. church and what it, what it should stand for. Correct. You know? So, so I think, I think for, for those who are doing the right thing, thank God for them, for those who advocate for the, I would say the, the, um, the young uh, or the weaker vessel in that sense, or, or female that we need to protect. Um, I thank God for those people. Um, but you said something very important that, that I like. And you said you want to be a little more careful and more thoughtful, a little more aware. Um, because out of everything that we consider right. to be bad or, um, you know, life, I would say, changing, um, there's some good that we can get from it. Yes. There is some there is some positive that we have, need to look at. Look at. Um, and even when we have our own kids, how we can how we can help to mold those kids into thinking more carefully and be more aware of the world around them. Because it is a crazy mean world out there. <laughs> you know. And but often, as a parent, as a mm -hmm. parent you you can't, I'm sorry, as a parent, you can't help to be kind of paranoid sometimes because there are so many things that are happening that are not good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You, yeah. You, you try your best to protect them, but you really know you can't protect them from everything. Can't do it. You, you so. know, I remember, I remember the mom of my, my, my kids, the mother of my kids, um, at one point, uh, I, I thought she was being paranoid. I thought she was. And she was just being very, very careful mm -hmm. because the field of work that she, that she, that she did, uh, it, it, was, it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of um, cases where, you know, you deal with, with substance abuse and mm -hmm. men who had to, you know, deal with certain counseling and they would confess what they did and, you know, for their own, I guess, healing or growth. And the thing that you would hear, it's mind blowing. You know, and of course you had you had to be kept confidential. I mean, yeah. confidential because that's you know that's the the confidentiality law. But um, yeah, when you hear the stories, like my goodness, you know, I have young girls and young babies home. I better I better make sure I keep my eyes open wide. So a lot of times you'd be like, hey. The kids are the outside them. Mm -hmm. Do you see them? You know where are they? I don't hear them. You know, and kept me on my kept me on my toes. Right. So That's yeah, true. sometimes paranoia sometimes saves yeah. some family. Because how many times you've heard about kid being snatched, uh, snatched true. from the street? You know, and the whole sex trafficking oh, yeah. thing going on. There's always someone, some kid missing. So it, it it do behooves us to be very very diligent and be very um, deliberate. And um, watching our kids and uh, or young people, mm -hmm. young girls especially, um, because of what's out there, you know. Yeah, that's right. So, oh yeah. So you think we should kind of touch back a little bit on last week's program, a little bit on that? Uh, we we uh we had we had ended off with a little. Oh uh, yeah, we. Mm -hmm. 
we can we're at the halfway mm. mark so yeah we can do that one yeah. yeah once again i want to say thank you for joining us we have been talking about the harvey weinstein case and our thoughts on it and how we are affected or not affected by it and so we are moving on to the second segment of our show this evening so last week quite a number of our callers and our listeners they were having a very spicy discussion where we were talking yes it was very spirited yeah, guys. very spirited you all were very yes. interactive last week <laughs> and the issue of you know sex and masturbation came up and one of the questions that was posed is that is masturbation a sin what makes it a sin how how do we address that in church are we addressing that in church mm -hmm. or is it covered up like the rest of the sexual topics that we're afraid to talk about in church mm -hmm. so you know so i, I, I think, think somebody I, I, asked so, I think somebody asked about using toys and so on as well. Yes, the, the toy, the toy store. I've seen a couple of those, you know. And it's funny because I remember, I remember, um, I remember a funny story. There was a store downtown. It was a Christian bookstore, and I used to, I used to go there like every so often. And you know, we buy music, and uh, that's where I got my first Bible, my nice thick leather Bible with my name on it. It was so cool. And um, but mm -hmm. along the way, it was, a, was there was a, I think it was a, a adults um store. Right. Uh, along the way, going to that, I, I always passed that store, and um, but you know, never thought about even imagine going in there, you know, going inside, and, right? Yeah, but I was always past the store, but I think at one point they kind of hide, they kind of did some lighting on the outside on the uh. The wording to make it very attractive and almost like a Lauren. So I went oh, in so past my your attention. Oh, and it caught my attention. I was like, wow, lights, you know. <laughs> but you know, me being scared and just very, you know, sheltered kid, church kid, you know, still was kind of, you know, thinking about it. But so one day on my way down to this Christian bookstore, I decided to just pop in there. Scared as scared out of my mind. And uh <laughs> went in there and I tell you, I was just like, I, you know, it's, it's funny because I really had the thought that um, um, it was only certain kind of people would, would frequent these stores. But when mm. I was out there, were like sharp, these men in sharp suits and they're, you know, like, wow, looking at whips and chains. I'm like, what's going on in here? I was just <laughs> taken, out, taken by the, the whole visualness. And, and 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 the variety. I'm like, what in the world is this? I'm like, I, I guess I did, I guess I don't know what's going on in this world here. I guess I'm really really out of touch. But um, but I, I didn't stay in there too long. I mean, I, I wrote some things that I actually just in my book, so I won't give it all away on this uh, segment here. But it was a learning okay. experience for me. Um, but but I realized that um, people do get into some heavy heavy stuff. Um, I, I think someone mm -hmm. asked us about fantasies about about uh, about um fantasies. Yes, yes, yes. I and that yeah, too. and yeah, and but to get back to the masturbation issue, I think that uh, like I said, I read a book, and the the author gave two perspectives on it. He said, "Listen, one, you know," and it was a Christian um event I went to, so oh, it was coming from a Christian mm -hmm. event. A lot of people, many okay. people, had different ideas about it. And so on and so forth, but I'm, we come from a Christian perspective, so you got to bear with us, all right. And, and so, therefore, he said, if one does it and think about uh, the opposite sex in a in that manner, biblically, it's, it wouldn't be it would be considered a sin. That's what that was the the thing. And the other thought was, okay. if someone is able to release himself without having those thoughts. Or conjure up those thoughts about someone else, then it, it may not be as far as that's concerned because uh, it's a relieving of oneself. So that was that's where that went. Um, we also talk about uh, is, can can it go, be done without go thinking about something? 
Um, you know, in I, this I don't, world, I, I don't you, know because you'll be surprised. That the, the ratio, the ratio of men, men to women, you know, well, the men would always, because most, most boys in their puberty, mm-hmm. leading up to young adulthood, ha- have, you know, masturbated a, mm-hmm. a lot of times. But I'm saying, okay. you, usually, Usually, I was having having a discussion with one of my friends, and and he was telling me that you notice that usually you see, you know, especially like young boys having like magazines under their beds, you know, like adult magazines and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. which which en- mm-hmm. would enhances experience, I would think. So I'm not a man, so I don't know, but. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I, question, think, I think, I think, can typically, you, can, I think, can you relieve I, 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 yourself without the thought? Well, maybe some can't because of how, but I think at the same time, you know, it's, it's funny, but you know, I've actually seen. Um, I thought they were kind people. in hand. I didn't, I didn't know that. Well, you know. you, you remember, I said, last week I said last week that there, there, these people it seem to be. They call them five percenters, or the five percent of the population that seem to be able to. They can quit smoking at a drop of a hat. They can stop okay. drinking, at a drop of a hat. You know, when the majority of people just can't, they have to go to one step program, twelve step program, the patch. They have right. to, you know, hematize, counseling, and some just mm-hmm. is done. So, I don't know who those people are, but as far as I know is not, I wouldn't say it's impossible. The human mind is a very powerful thing. And in fact, I saw a documentary, mm-hmm. I don't remember uh, the actual name of it, where people um, experience orgasm without even touching each other, without even touching each other. Wow. Yes. That's um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot that goes on, that, that um, different culture, different different way of doing things. And you'd be surprised how it, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's different from what we may grow up to think. Or you know how we mm-hmm. culture to believe, but um, I personally don't think it's the norm. You know, maybe a few, a few percentage of people can do that. Uh, so okay. you know, something I would just you know espouse. You know, go ahead, guys. You know, get down and hopefully don't have a thought. Especially the way our world is right <laughs> now, we're so visually right. inclined. You know what I mean? You know, to, to sell something on TV, a car, a radio, a hammer, a stove, they're using a nice, pretty lady. So they're already That's right. planting That's our right. minds that you need to have some imagery mm. to get some kind of It's already, like, it's already enjoyment. socially yeah. intertwined, so. Mm-hmm. Yes. So how do you feel about toys? Because here we are talking about toys now. When you're married to a woman, that you're supposed to be hers and her alone, and, and, and the way it is, why use extra stuff? Why not just go with the natural and just and just go for it and be a blessing to, to each other? Why the added stuff? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You know, it, it depends on it depends on the kind of person you are. Um, there are couples that yeah, using toys is not, it's not an offense. It, okay. It's an so, enhancement. So, so you're saying right. both both parties so, have to agree, in other words, right? Because well, it doesn't make any sense. You are, if you are alone are into it, well, I don't think I don't think there's any fun in that, and that okay. makes it an argument. Gotcha. I think I think there should be discussion first, because okay. you wouldn't want to just surprise me with something. You mm-hmm. know, for example, suppose I don't like to be tied up. You know, are, oh. <laughs> you, you don't, you understand? Yeah. So I think there should be a discussion about it. You know, find out the, the likes, the dislikes. And I think it, it would be it would be nice if both parties go, you know, researching the kinds of toys. There are, there are so many okay. these days. But you know so it's funny. It, but you it, mentioned it toys. Be, it would be fun to um, it would be fun to research that together. So at least both of you would you know are on the same page. On the same page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
but you know that's interesting what you say because as 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 someone mentioned toy last week or toys last week there are so many things that people can use a sense certain smell certain creams and lotions certain things that it may not necessarily be mm-hmm. uh, you know any way abrasive in that kind of in sense of the word or invasive in that kind of word but stuff to kind of um create an environment you know and you and you'd be surprised that um People say, well, people, oh, people know these things, but you'd be surprised how many people never venture out of something that's a little bit different, just a little bit um, uh, new and, 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 and safe. That's true. You know, they just, it does the same old, you know, um, routine um, thing. And sometimes they wonder, why, yeah, yeah. And they wonder why sometimes they, they don't, um, they don't maintain that, level of um excitement and mystery some people, some yeah. people are just old school some people mm-hmm. old school like and i met a guy because... um mm-hmm. i met a guy we were at a we were at a function i think and uh, he's a pretty young guy like pretty young and he's like i'm i i'm not into oral sex Mm-hmm. And his friends were laughing like, "What do you mean?" You know, because they were saying that like, you're young. What What do you mean by you know? Mm-hmm. But he was he was he was brought up that you know that's just not right. Okay. So you know, I know, I know, and, 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 I, I, I know a grown lady, she started to cut you, Misty. Um, mm-hmm. Way in her 30s and uh, maybe close to 40s or 40s. And uh, she said that, you know, she, before she became saved, um, came to the church, she pretty mm-hmm. much was a party girl. And she yeah. you know, pretty much was explorative in a lot of her, a lot of her ways. And when she got mm-hmm. married, the guy said, no way, we're not even going there. It's so said for her, it was a very, very um difficult thing for her, transition for her mm, to have someone so adamant again, yeah, and never and she said, Wow, and she said she confessed that, you know, she just learned to cope and deal with him and love him, do it. But how many men you've known mm. or women you've known who have looked out the window and you know, it things that a marriage commitment, you know, I think people de- these days they don't take it as serious as before. And I think it takes a little, it takes, it doesn't, it doesn't take as much for folks to start looking out or thinking, yeah. you know, so the pressure is on again with the family again. You, you see, we're living at a time where people are exposed more than ever. And we uh, to expose sometimes, I think. And, yeah. So you have the man and the woman have to keep up more with the money, more with the emotional support. So you have... Mm-hmm. At a time where you had the men working hard and the woman is saying, I need more time, I need emotional support. But then she wants the money to shop as well and look good. <laughs> and then, you know, you, you, <laughs> you have a situation where people are working hard and they burn out. And so therefore they're not, they're not functioning as they would like to function as before. That's right. And then you have a, a woman or a guy who has a memory of a past fiery thing that happened and they're now they're trying to compare that into their marriage and not and overlooking the fact that there are kids involved and life is a little more complex and they're you know the work is there exactly. and sometimes people just not as not as um not as uh, uh as, as reasonable as they should yeah and many and not as sensitive I think one to, yeah, to other to, persons, yeah, the changes you know mm-hmm. yeah so, so being so, so, so being married, Mister, being a married woman, uh, mm-hmm. do you do you? What would you say to the, the the young lady who's who's married, like yourself, or looking to get married? I mean, how would you mm-hmm. share some of your thoughts about being an effective wife and mother? You know, I'm sure to a great husband, of of course. I mean, how would you maybe mm-hmm. give some little tips and and, and tips 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 of and tricks of the trade, so to speak? Uh, I think you should, and, and, and this is something I, I tell like some of my friends all the time. First of all, you will not 
no matter how much you know a man, you will not know everything. No matter mm. how, how much you know a woman, mm. you won't know everything until you start to live with them and interact with them in the same space. Mm. Right? Now, especially when it comes on to sex and anything relational like that, I tell people all the while, have a discussion. And this is not a one night thing. You know, go into go into everything. Ask questions. Excuse me. Because you you may not you may not know what you're agreeing to. You may not know find out the likes and dislikes. Whether you're question or not, because these things will prove to be important in your yes. relationship. Wow. Talk about Let me it. give us two. If, if, if yeah, let me give us a shot here. Some, um, if it's something. Yeah, you can go ahead, continue, go ahead, but go ahead. let me give a few shout outs out here. I see um, um, Big Rick. I see Belly Sunny. I see uh, Laurie. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, God, for joining us. Um, go ahead, Misty. Right. See here, um, I'm, I'm reading a comment by Big Rick that says it takes at least three to five years of living with a person, depending on the people, to learn who someone is, and that's true. Mm, I think this year makes this year great, great makes point. Great point. Uh, five great point. five years since I've been married. Right. Mm -hmm. This year, and there are other things that I didn't know before going into marriage right wow. and it can take much longer but especially when it comes on to sex sex is a very important okay part of okay. your marriage and you have to think about the dynamics of the, the individual for example okay if you are getting married to somebody who has been what we would call like out in the world right mm -hmm. before you got saved and coming as opposed to a church girl who has been in church all her life. They, that's two different experiences right there. True. So True. a discussion has to be had about those kinds of things when it comes down to sex. If you like toys, you like those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, my mm -hmm. friend would say, find out the freak level. <laughs> okay. Of the person. Got you. You know? Uh, how much, how much of this, how much of this do you think should be discussed in a counseling session, and how deep should it go? Uh, right, that I was just, I was just, a, I was just about to say, mm -hmm. if in your own private discussions you find that there, there is something that's difficult to talk about, then in your premarital counseling, and just by the way, I'm telling you, premarital counseling makes sense. Okay. okay. Don't think that, oh, I'm in love, I'm going to do that. Premarital counseling gets into some areas you didn't even think about. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a time now where the, the, the counselor, along with yourself and your partner, can go in and talk about certain issues or certain questions that you may have that you may probably be afraid to ask or not sure Mm -hmm. the answer and so on so counseling is a high, highly so, highly imperative I, I highly recommend it you know there are persons that say that it's optional I don't have to but but personally personally I think that you you should you should wow because it it, it brings out a lot of stuff that you never even thought about you know mm -hmm. something as simple as as money management Okay. Some, some people have okay. an issue with something as simple as should there be a joint account or should I keep my own money, you keep your own money. Something as simple as that, you know. Can cause, can cause a lot of, of issues, yeah. Right. Wow. Right. So, you've heard, lady, you heard it from the lady, you heard it from Lady Misty. Um, <laughs> listen to Kristen and Sex, y'all, um, here on Yumi Radio. Um, you can check out our app at the Play Store, App Store. Uh, you me radio that's one word u m e r a d i o um there's so much more we have going on on that app um as far as what we are sharing with folks and offering to folks uh, we are a community here of people that uh, that where everyone has a voice 
Um, and 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 I think we have a call in real quick before we end out this session here. This is uh, Patty okay. Cake. How are you? You're on the air, Patty Cake. How are you? Hello. Yeah, hello. how are you? Hi, hello. Good where, where are you calling from? I'm fine, you? I'm doing fantastic. And where are you calling from? I'm good. I, I'm from Canada. Hey, how are you? Okay. What do you want to share with us Shout today? Shout out to Canada. Well, I would like to share an experience with you guys. Okay. When I was Go ahead. younger, I was touched by a bad man, and it, it's still on me today. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So, um, have you gone to counseling to, to, to deal with that issue? Have you talked to, like, a pastor or someone to offer some kind of a guidance or counseling on that to, to kind of deal with that old issue? Well, it was someone from my family, so I felt really ashamed to talk to people around me. Oh, so, yeah. so, what, so what made you finally decide to speak about speak up about it? And what, what made you come to that point? <clears throat> well, it's been so long now, and I I don't know how to get it out. You know. So you haven't you haven't spoke about it to anyone yet. I did to some people, but. They couldn't do much about it. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, um, I would I would highly encourage you to, to, to speak to a counselor. Um, we have a few minutes left on the program, but I'm glad you make yourself to call in because I'm sure like you, there are many others out there that are suffering in silence. And, That's right. And, and uh, it's just a year or we're going to make breakthroughs. It's a year we're going to see people say, you know what, enough is enough. You know, and I won't become a victim anymore. I won't maintain a victim mentality anymore. I will become a victor over this thing because you are, we are a, a spiritual being that's that occupied in a physical body. And sometimes we, we are uh, allowed to think more physical than spiritual because, you see, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, our body is going to change. Our bodies, we may die one day. So the body is not as important as the spirit, man. And that's where God works. That's where we, when we say Christian and sex, we're saying we're operating from a Christian perspective first, from a, from, from, a, from a spiritual perspective first that provides healing and provides wholeness to the people. That, that's what it's about. You have a conversation. We can talk and see what has, what, what has happened here and how can we go back and, and see who we are and, who's we, and who we belong to. And we belong to the creator. And he made us powerful. It made us victorious, not victims. So when this didn't happen to us, it means that means that someone was trying to destroy who you were, and here you are now saying, "Hey, this happened to me," and I'm sure someone who's listening right now say, "You know what? This, this lady can call in. Maybe I should maybe I should go see someone too about my situation." So you, so you can touch lives, even with your testimony, even with your experience, can be a blessing for so many people around the world. This station right now is in over 40 countries and people call in and they, they listen and they participate so i thank you for calling in um but before we go if you don't mind uh you know I, I, you know we you know whatever something happened in this world that's, that we call crisis people pray governments pray and presidents pray or oh, pray for the country well we, we, we believe in prayer so i'm always for a short prayer if you don't mind well uh, misty what happened is my uncle was a priest and you raped me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, so that's what we my had... faith and religion went very low after that. Mm. I couldn't yeah. God, even if people will want me to. Uh, well, I'm. I'm. We, my we, we, is we, that we, you need to speak with somebody that is a professional mm-hmm. to guide you through this journey. Yes. Um, just for yes. you to unload and just to help you through the process of healing. Mm-hmm. Right. So that, that's important. So talking about it is a great start. Um, but seeing yeah. someone, you know, a professional with a professional um, is also very, very vital because you be able right. to dig deeper into the pain and so forth and connect the dots, right? To make it to make you uh um be a, little a more, whole person again yes 
fulfilled. Yeah. By pedophilia and mm. being a priest. Mm. That's unfortunate, but so we we have only two minutes on on the airwaves. So like like I said, um, I'm gonna say a quick prayer. Uh, all right, for just not just you, but the entire audience. And, and Father, we thank you tonight for those who who are listening in. You know, different different parts of the world. There's some are family, some are single, some are jobs, some are looking for jobs, some may have personal thing going in, going on in their lives, Father. So, but we thank you because you created us. You created us all, and, and we we thank mm -hmm. you that you are going to be the one to help us out of every situation. As long as we give ourselves to you, we be, we trust you that because you love us and you know us more than we even know ourselves. So, Father, tonight for those who are watching and listening. Bless them. Bless their household. Bless them when they go out, when they come in. Um, give them favor for 2020. Those who are looking for a job, you open doors for them, Father. You will give them peace. Uh, and peace that they will wonder they won't be able to even understand. And Father, as we about to close this segment here, we thank you for for those who participated, um, those who joined us and, yes. and shared with us and and they stood by us in this uh in, the, in this episode here, Father, we thank you for Lady Misty, my co-host, and for the lady that called in, Father, we, we know that you will direct her, and her call is not in vain, but she will find a source of strength in you and peace in you, and Father, you will direct her to the right source where she will get the help she needs to be whole again. Amen. We ask That's these true. things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, have a great night. Amen. See you on the next episode on Christian and Sex next Monday at what time, uh, Misty? It's at now.